Mr. President, I want to talk a few minutes today about inflation, but I don't want to just talk about the problem. I want to talk about the solution as well and Congress's role. Um, I don't need to tell the American people, and I certainly don't need to tell my colleagues about inflation. Um, the inflation we're experiencing today is the, uh, the highest since 1982. And, and it really is ravaging the American people. It's gutting them like a fish. Um, depending upon which experts you believe, inflation rate right now is about 8%. Most Americans will tell you viscerally they feel that it's higher. Every time they go to the grocery store, they feel like prices have gone up 8%. Um, and I don't really want to debate or discuss the causes too much. There, there are basically two types of inflation. There's what's called demand pull inflation and cost push inflation. Uh, inflation is just basically too much money chasing too few goods. Uh, if you restrict the supply of the goods, um, um, that's, that's, some, that's called cost push inflation. If you keep the supply of the goods constant and raise demand for the goods, that's called demand, demand pull inflation. And the truth is our current inflation is a, is a direct product of both cost push and demand pull. I, I do think, um, well, I know that uh, the United States Congress had to spend more money than we would have liked to deal with the pandemic, but I also believe that once the pandemic was over and the economy was recovering, we kept on spending. And all of that spending was stimulatory or stimulative. And all of that spending did add to inflation. Once again, too much money chasing too few goods. Since the 1950s, Mr. President, we have had roughly 10 uh, periods of inflation, some infl very high inflation, some more moderate, but 10 inflationary periods, if you will in which government decided we need, we need to reduce the rise in prices. We need to reduce inflation. Uh, most people remember the inflationary period of the 1980s. I, I know you do, Mr. President. But there have been 10 inflationary periods. And normally what we do to deal with inflation, we talk about the Federal Reserve. And we know the Federal Reserve, to get prices down, raises interest rates. Well, why does the Federal Reserve do that? It does that to slow the economy. Well, what does that mean? How do you measure slowing the economy? Well, here, here's the dirty little secret that we all don't talk about much. When the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, to slow the economy, I'll tell you how they, they measure it. They measure it in jobs. And they measure it in the unemployment rate. And in effect, I'm not being critical of them. The Federal Reserve is doing its job. But what the Federal Reserve does when it raises interest rates to slow the economy, they're trying to throw people out of work. They're trying to throw people out of work. Now, I made a few notes. Right now, the, the unemployment rate is about 3.7%. And if you go back in these 10 periods of inflation since the 1950s and look at how many people the Federal Reserve had to put out of work in order to get to the inflation down, here's what you see. On average, during those 10 periods, uh, to get inflation down 2%, the, we had to see a, a rise in unemployment of 3.6%. Now, what does that mean? Today, uh, unemployment is about 3.7%. Inflation is, let's call it 8%. Historically, I'm not saying it will be the case this time, but historically, that would mean that the Federal Reserve, in order to reduce inflation by 
would have to raise unemployment to 7.3%. And those aren't just a bunch of sterile statistics on a page. That's 6 million jobs that will be lost. People out of work. Um, we have some really smart economists who've looked at this problem. Uh, Jason Furman, for example. Um, Larry Summers. They both happen to be uh, uh, smart economists who, who, who served President Obama. Uh, they are suggesting that in order to get this high inflation down, if we just depend on the Federal Reserve alone, that we will have to have an unemployment rate of between 7.5 and 10 percent for a pretty long period of time. That's anywhere from 8 to 10, millions Amer 10 million Americans out of work. And that's a lot of pain. Now, what can Congress do to help? If you, if you look at the worst of those 10 periods of inflation, most people, I do, think of the 1980s. And most people consider Paul Volcker to, to, uh, to be a hero because the, the Federal, then Federal Reserve chairman got, got inflation down. And a lot of people think that, that the chair of you know, the Federal Reserve then did it all by himself by raising interest rates so high, causing unemployment to go so, up so high, uh, causing a lot of pain. He didn't do it alone. Congress helped him. The Reagan when the Reagan administration came in, the Reagan administration, first thing it, it did, it cut taxes, which was inflationary. No question. But then the Reagan administration and the United States Congress worked with the Federal Reserve, whereby the Federal Reserve would raise interest rates, but Congress tried to slow the growth in spending not cut spending in the sense of our budget this year will be less than last year, just slowing the growth in spending and slowing debt accumulation. And that's how we conquered, other than now, the worst inflationary period in the United States. It wasn't just the Federal Reserve. Congress did its part. We have to slow the rate of growth in our budget, and we have to slow uh, the accumulation of debt. Now, you say, not you literally, Mr. President, but one might say, well, you know, Congress doesn't have to do anything, Kennedy. The United States Senate can do what, it's want, what it wants, and that's true. That's true. But if we don't, if we don't slow the rate of growth in our spending, if we don't slow the accumulation of debt, that is going to cause the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates even higher, to slow the economy, to raise the unemployment rate, to throw people out of work. And all I'm saying, Mr. President, we all hate inflation. Nobody wants this inflation. And, and it, we can debate till the cows come home about what caused it. Okay? Um, was it supply chains? Is it Ukraine? Is it Putin? I happen to think a big part of it is demand pull inflation. And we just spent too much money once the pandemic was over. But I know many of my Democratic friends disagree with me. But the, they can't, they shouldn't disagree with me on this. We need to do our part to help our Federal Reserve because the Federal Reserve is not raising interest rates just to raise rates. It's raising interest rates, which is its job to throw people out of work. And if this has to raise interest rates to 10 or 12 percent and keep them there, we're going to have 10 plus a million Americans out of work. And you know what's Worse than not having enough money to pay for what you need, not having any money, losing your job. Congress can help, but it's going to require help from both sides, both Democrats and Republicans. We're going to have to agree to spend less money. 
We just are. And I know we have needs. And I'm not saying cut the budget in half, but we have got to reduce the rate of growth in our spending, and we have got to reduce the rate of accumulation in our debt. And even then, we won't be able to avoid all the pain of inflation. But we'll be able to save, I predict, millions and millions of jobs that we'd otherwise lose to these high interest rates. And, the, and, and I know not all my colleagues agree with me. They don't. I've got Republican colleagues. I know that there are some of my Democratic friends, but I've got Republican con some Republican colleagues who think that how much we spend makes no difference. They think it makes absolutely no difference. And with all the respect I can muster, they are wrong. And all you have to do is look at history. And the only way we conquered inflation the last time it was this bad in the 1980s was through, through the cooperation of the Federal Reserve doing its job on the monetary side, but also this Congress doing its job on the fiscal side. Um, with that, Mr. President, I suggest the absence of a quorum.